municipalities generate their own resources um, called uh, different and placed in different uh, uh, chart of accounts. The government's response at this current time, we recognize that municipalities have been affected. Their revenue collection has been affected because of COVID. Uh, many of them have been unable to garner market uh, fees and, and other fees. And so the government took a decision over a week ago to release funds in support of uh, the expenditure incurred by municipalities to pay staff in this specific case. Each municipality will receive $2 million. Um, the cabinet has made that uh, decision. The releases are in process, and I've been advised that via the Ministry of Finance that those uh, re uh, releases will be made to the municipalities by tomorrow. So we would like to advise the municipalities that the resources are coming their way, and they must u use those resources judiciously and really for the purpose that the resources are given to the municipalities. And that is to pay staff in cases where some of the municipalities are unable to do so at this point in time. We have a situation in Region 2, Anna Regina Township, the only town in, in Region 2, and uh, staff went to the extent of uh, launching a protest. Uh, we would like to encourage them and implore upon them to remain calm that we will help, the government will help, and uh, at the same time, I think that uh, it is prudent for us to launch audits across all of the municipalities. As a matter of fact, we have already written to the Auditor General to launch an audit in Mabaruma because there are serious financial irregularities, as we are aware, in the township of Mabaruma. And likewise, uh, I think that it is prudent for us to do the same in all ten, uh, all other nine uh, municipalities. And I, I can share some figures with you. In the case of Anne Regina, for example, in the last five years, between 2015 to 2019, in that five-year period, they have been able to garner over $272 million in terms of revenues. So we, we would hope that you know, uh, the, the revenues are, are well spent and the audit naturally will show whether the revenues were well spent and that they had value for money. We, in, in the case of Georgetown, in between 2015 to 2019, ending December, they, they earned $12.7 billion. And Georgetown, as you're aware, is, is one of the most cash-strapped uh, municipalities, always in financial difficulties. Georgetown, when I, in a recent meeting I had with the city treasurer acting, he indicated to me that they have over 770 active staff. They have over 250 uh, uh, pensioners that they have to pay pension. So in effect, their wage bill is uh, over 1,000 employees. Um, tuning, uh, I think, is $120 million per month. So it is quite substantial. And I think a management financial audit to to review the areas where there are inefficiencies and, and lack of effectiveness. I think audits are going to, to serve that purpose. We will have to sit and, and design the TOR of, of these audits. In, in the case of Linden, the Township of Linden, between 2015 to 2019, their revenue accrued to $1.2 billion. And uh, <coughs> same, uh, I, I recently met with the, the council of, of the town of Linden as well, and uh, we spoke about ensuring that accounts are, are, or finances are, are well managed. And uh, this, all of this is in, in, in keeping with our uh, mandate of transparency and accountability and value for money across our municipalities. In New Amsterdam, that is in Region 6, they are uh, accrued between 2015 to 2019 with 645 million. And again, all of these entities still have problems with, with the management of their resources. Uh, in, in Rose Hall, it is 260 million, uh, Curvaton, 425 million, and Bartica, where I was over the weekend, there uh, between 2017 to 2019, that three-year period, they accrued $225 million in, in, in revenues. So I believe that with an audit, or at least 10 audits, in these uh, institutions or local uh, democratic organs, 
we would be able to get a, a good idea of uh, what are the, the, the gaps and where are the inefficiencies so we can work with the administration of these municipalities to, 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 to manage their resources better and to ensure that staff, staff is taken care of, that they are paid on time. Uh, they, are, they are a critical cost center and the government will continue to look out on behalf of, of all staff at this point in time. And this was a cause of a lack of management of resources, or is it something otherwise? Well, uh, <clears throat> the government gives subventions to all of the municipalities, as we do to the 70 NDCs as well. Uh, uh, municipalities also have different areas that they generate revenue from. I personally believe that when I review the performance of, the, of, of these uh, municipalities, as a citizen, and now as the Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, I think that there are challenges in terms of financial management, and I believe that we can work with these organs to, to tighten up so that these resources can be much better managed. Um, a lot of it goes to, to employment, to solid waste management, and very little go towards the development of the municipalities. So you would find central government also investing significantly in the infrastructural development of um, the municipalities, which actually should have been the, the responsibility of the respective municipalities. Well, uh, yes, uh, in Georgetown's case, uh, we have uh, had our interministerial committee that, that is uh, working on, on, on that aspect of it. In a recent discussion we had with City Hall, they have begun now again to uh, build a superstructure on their admin building. We hope that that is going apace and their resources to get that, not up to a point of completion, but I think to a state of readiness where the services can, can be provided from, 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 from a, an admin building. We are also working very closely with the private sector and other donors at this point in time to look at the restoration of City Hall. I think uh, that is a, an, an investment that all of us as Guyanese would have to make because City Hall is a national trust building. Uh, it is part of our heritage, it's a legacy of our past, and uh, it, it, it'll serve as, you know, a potential for our future in terms of uh, tourism and, and historical tourism, for example. In the other areas too, we are investing heavily. The president himself has uh, indicated and, and uh, allocated resources too for many of the municipalities to do infrastructural works. Uh, we are currently expanding the Higgs-Bosch uh, sanitary landfill. Cell two will, be, will start taking solid waste from the end of this year. And likewise, uh, in the other municipalities, we have to, to also manage the solid waste aspects very closely. Uh, in my a visit to Bartika over the weekend, the residents of Baidarabu, where the solid waste management site is, or, or the, the landfill, um, they have complained bitterly about the, the condition of the, the landfill and it is something that I brought to the attention of the mayor and councillors of Bartica, and hopefully that situation has to be rectified and, and we hope to do so very soon. Likewise, in, in other areas too, we are providing necessary support. It may not be all that they require, but with uh, you know, limited resources, the government is still trying as much as possible to help. The reason is because every citizen means something to us and we have to make sure that their lives are enhanced. So we cannot also allow the inefficiencies, the ineffectiveness, and the, the lack of competence in some quarters in many of the municipalities to affect the, the, the livelihood and living conditions of our citizens. Okay, anything else you'd like to add? Yes, certainly. I, I think that um, moving forward, the Local Government Commission comes to an end uh, on the 22nd of October, which is just a few days away. We, we are aware that uh, there have been instances where uh, recruitment has, has, been, uh, not, has been affected to the extent that many officers of different municipalities and uh, NDCs have, have indicated that things have not been done 
uh, above board. I've written to the chair of the local government commission uh, advising um, that they should reconsider at this point in time or, or put on hold and reconsider the current recruitment that they conducted with City Hall regarding the treasurer, regarding some staff of the engineering department, uh, the town clerk. So they, they have indicated that um, they will not be amenable to doing so. Um, you are also aware too that uh, we swore in a, a, councilor, uh, a commissioner recently, Mr. Julius Faber. So we now have a, a commission that is going to meet tomorrow. And I hope that uh, as a citizen, I, I, I think that the local government commission should take into our, their consideration our concerns in terms of the, the competence of people that they put on the local democratic organs. And in this case, the city of Georgetown. Georgetown is a massive uh, project. As I indicated to you, in five years, they, they earned over $12.7 billion. And still yet, Georgetown is in financial, uh, in a financially terrible state. In, they, they are also, in terms of the management of, of the institution of the city of Georgetown, I think uh, leaves much to be desired.